Okay, we're back here live in Las Vegas here for the Splunk Conference, DOT Conference 2013. This is theCUBE, our flagship program where we extract the signal from the noise. This is the Splunk Conference. We're there spinning data exhaust into gold, which is a massive growth market. That's the, that's the tagline, no limits. Um, an amazing conference here. We had wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Day one of two days of live coverage on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante. I'm with Wikibon.org. Rich Collier is here. He's a principal solutions architect at a company called Prelert. It's an independent software vendor inside of the Splunk community and ecosystem. Rich, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you very much. So tell us more about uh, Prelert. You guys are developing a pretty cool app. Tell us about it. Sure, uh, basically the idea is that uh, we're bringing sort of machine, uh, machine learning, machine intelligence to machine data. And the whole idea behind it, of course, is to, uh, to help the mere mortal, right? To help uh, humans uh, extract more value out of the data uh, using uh, some pretty advanced uh, statistical techniques. Uh, the idea being that um, you know, not everyone is a data scientist, right? So bringing uh, a lot of the, the same kind of techniques that data scientists use but uh, package it in such a way that it makes it easier for the you know, sort of average user to get value out of their data. So we've been hearing a lot of that. Yep. You know, that's the thematic. Uh, where, do you, where do you pick up and where does Splunk leave off? Sure, well, you know, it's kind of one of those things where um, you know, your success with uh, you know, sort of getting insight from your data very often is uh, somewhat of a, uh, dependent upon your skill level, right, as a, as a user and, and sort of how much time you want to put into that. And so, very often, uh, you know, people that are, you know, pretty good experts uh, at Splunk uh, can, you know, pretty much somewhat approximate what we do with our analytical techniques, but there are certain aspects of what we do that are simply impossible to do with Splunk just because of the limitations of the way that the, uh, certainly the search pipeline works in, in Splunk, uh, being able for us to, for example, look at, uh, you know, multiple kinds of analysis simultaneously, so it's a scalability factor there. But uh, you know, ultimately, you know, again, it's, it's, it's trying to you know, provide the user with a set of tools uh, that uh, you know, enhance uh, you know, the way that they look at data and sort of, I guess in a similar kind of way that statistics have helped other things, right? Like uh, you know, weather forecasting and um, election predictions, for example, you know. Do you have any particular uh, industry focus or is it more horizontal? It's, it's really across the board. Oh, so, so yeah, we've got users that are, you know, uh, social media companies, uh, security companies, uh, banks, uh, insurance companies. It's really across the board. It's basically anybody, again, trying to get a lot more value out of their data with less human effort, if you so will. So you, you beef up Splunk, Splunk, you make it more scalable, you make it more uh, uh, functional, deeper function, uh, uh, there's a performance aspect of, of what you do, you just make yeah. it better. Yeah, Is that yeah, right? Yeah, that's pretty much it, yeah. So how do you, how do, you do that? Because <laughs> Splunk's moving forward, you're moving forward, so you just gotta, you're like, just keep ahead of it? <laughs> you know, you understand where the curve is, and yeah, well, they we share use, their roadmap, and yeah, say, okay, why don't you guys go fill this white space? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. So we, sp we certainly spend a lot of time with Splunk, um, corporate, you know, on a corporate level, yep. uh, understanding things. You know, we work a lot with the uh, product management team and, and uh, ha you know, have some discussions there about how we can work together better. Uh, we're very much in tune with, uh, you know, the, the engineering roadmap. In fact, um, Splunk themselves were so impressed with what we've done with our own app, given that it's, it's pretty complicated with some of the things that we've done, right? Uh, they wanted us to be heavily involved with the new Splunk 6 app framework because all the new changes that are involved there. So, uh, in fact, our CTO, uh, Steve Dotson, who's here at the conference, uh, I think is doing some sort of interview with them now, right, on that very topic. How, how, how what's your head count? 
uh, at, at Prelert, roughly? I mean, do you know how many people work there? Yes, yeah, so we're, we're still pretty small, so we're still under 20 people. Okay. Um, and you got offices in Boston and London, right? Offices in Boston and London. So you're London, really yeah. specialists, right, in this space, right? How, yeah, so our, I mean, our development team, frankly, uh, I mean, they're really steeped in computational statistics. I mean, that's our, you know, core uh, intellectual property. Um, you know, so, you know, when we first started, uh, you know, we, we had a standalone version of the app and quickly realized that, that we didn't want to write a lot of uh, sort of data collection mechanisms to get data to us, right? We wanted to piggyback on top of existing tools that already had a wealth of data that was potentially untapped, right? So, you know, we've done obviously this partnership with Splunk. Uh, we've done uh, an OEM with a, a, a very prominent APM uh, uh, tool in the marketplace. So again, sort of under the mantra of taking existing tools and data and making it better for, uh, for humans. What if we can ask you, so we had Nate Silver on a few weeks ago. Oh yeah, yeah. He was on that, yeah. uh, we were at the Tableau conference and um, we were asking him about social data and he was, he was sort of um, a half, half empty on that topic, uh, basically saying that there you know, wasn't enough good data, the patterns weren't there yet. Do you see that, or do you see that social data actually has the ingredients from a, from a computational statistics basis to actually start to provide answers and direction and, and, and trends? You know, I, don't, I don't necessarily think that you know, any kind of data set in itself necessarily is the silver bullet. What I, at least what I've seen from our customers is, is when you sort of bring a lot of disparate data that may be loosely coupled and bring it together, that's where you can get more of a, a better picture of things. So, I mean, certainly if you focus on one data set, you can sort of eke out some interesting things out of it on its own. But um, very often, a lot of our customers say, well, that's good, but I want to, you know, I want to correlate, uh, you know, my network data with my authentication data, or I want to correlate my app server data with my call center data, or whatever. Painting more of a, uh, sort of whole, holistic picture of what's going on. I think that's more uh, sort of timely in a lot of ways. Now you guys don't resell Splunk, right? So you go into Splunk customer sites. You go, but you, you co-sell. How's that all work? So I mean, it, yeah. In, in general, obviously, since this this app requires Splunk to be there in the first place, we have to sort of be on the on, on the on the tail end of things. So, mm. we, um, but you know, very often, even in some some types of uh, you know competitive situations, you know, Splunk is. Uh, you're trying to uh, interest somebody in their platform, they see us as a, you know as another augment you know augmentation to uh, to their platform, and they will bring us in even on sales calls sometimes to, to to really in some ways to demonstrate how well that Splunk is a platform and that a third party can come along with some expertise and you know make their their framework look good right you know, to the customer. Now, are you typically selling to the IT function or increasingly the business function? Talk about who the customer is. So I would say that when we uh, first released our app, we were pretty much in the sweet spot of, I would say, the IT ops and performance management crowd, mm -hmm. right? So uh, sort of traditional monitoring, sort of data center monitoring, uh, infrastructure, application monitoring. Um, with some of the stuff that we've done in uh, sort of our most recent release, we're also getting a lot of traction around security, right? So, and, you know, anomaly detection in sort of the security context. Um, we do have some customers that even use us on business data, uh, but I would say that relatively speaking, the, the, you know, the, the big push right now is obviously in the security side, but we've got a lot of uh, sort of critical mass for people that are doing more traditional IT ops and APM stuff. So what's driving the big push in security? Just the increased uh, awareness on it? Uh, you know, pr Prism, <laughs> NSA, yeah. cloud, what's, yeah. what's the driver there? You know, I think on some level, um, you know, some security experts are sort of realizing the limitations of uh, sort of being behind, uh, you know, the, the, the persistent threats, being behind the eight ball, right? Not trying to get in front of, of, uh, of the users, uh, of the bad guys. Um, always searching for the unknown unknowns, right? If you can't search for it, you don't know to search for it, how do you know it's, uh, how do you know it's out there? So I think a lot of security experts are now coming to grips with using more of a statistical method to find what's different in the data instead of relying on traditional sort of rules and you know, the known threats, the known knowns. 
right, so to speak. So, so you're saying the emphasis is now on trying to figure out uh, what you don't know. Is that right? Yeah, or you know, in, even in some cases, um, you know, f finding things at scale, right? Which is, I've got a lot of data. I don't know what I'm looking for. At least, just you know, help me narrow it down to something that I can focus on as a, you know, as a as a human, right? Right. And, and okay, so really, it's the old, the old saying: you can't take the humans out of the you know, humans are the last mile. Can't take the humans right. out of the equation. So speaking of equations, you got this equation on your shirt. I oh see. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's this math equation. Says I'm not normal. Uh, what is that equation describing? It's actually this is a this is a equation for a Poisson probability distribution. Okay, so right. Poisson distribution. We're yeah, in that's statistics. Right. <laughs> yeah. so. I remember my math days. You yeah. know. No, so the, I, the idea is that, <laughs> and the reason why we say I, I'm not normal because um, sort of it's a sort of traditional fallacy that that a lot of machine data is normally distributed. I mean, it sort of forms a... There's randomness, sort of, certainly, involved. There's certain randomness, but, but there's a lot of data that doesn't follow that normal distribution. Yeah. Right, it uh, follows more of a Poisson distribution or a log normal distribution. And, and one of the cool things about the way that, that our um, statistics works is we use machine learning to automatically figure out what is the best fit model for the data. If you fit the, the model to the data better, then you actually get uh, you know, better outlier detection, you get better you know, results, and you get less false positives and false negatives. Well, I mean, listen, listen, math and statistics have been a great boon for businesses in the, in the brick and mortar world. I mean, Poisson distribution, some of the math we're talking about, have shaped how businesses organize and op their operations, whether it's a drive-through, uh, you know, uh, in and out burger, where they locate things, and just random probabilities, some randomness, but yet some predictability. Now with machine learning, you can scale that to a whole nother level. So have you seen the business impact, some of your clients, and what, what, where do you see that going? When you look at some of the math involved, where you get some sample data, extrapolate, use the, use the predictive analytics, it's going to impact the value chains of a lot of the businesses out there. Have you guys gotten to that level of analysis yet? Yeah, I think one of the things, at least I'm seeing from a lot of our customers, is that um, you know, they're scaling Splunk, they're scaling their data collection in some ways, they're doubling it every year. Right, and they realize they're not doubling their staff every year. Right, so they, they, they need to figure out ways that they can scale their analysis of their data in an efficient way that doesn't require the human aspect of things. So they're, they already are recognizing that they need something to help. Right, they need something that helps them Talk about better. the automation piece, because one of the things that I'm seeing a lot of great things like you guys doing, I mean, by the way, great work, by the way, this is cutting edge, leading edge, and really great pioneering work that's relevant. But you're automating, you're using the technology to create some automation that would normally require a lot of manual process. We obviously see that with Splunk with log files, the no-brainer, right? Yep. Grepping through log files, we all, we all know what that means. But when you start looking at the automation of things, that's really where the impact is, because then people can do their jobs. So with that in mind, that automation, the next leg of, the next domino to fall, so to speak, or next leg of the journey is what? The skills, what's your take on that? Obviously, you get the automation in place, yeah, some geekiness, math, data science, data modeling. After that, what's next? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. Um, you know, I think one of the things that we want to, you know, we want to do is, is you know, make our technology so ubiquitous that everyone can use it, right? So I think it's, it's, it's broadening out to uh, not just the expert users, but also to the novice users, right? So, um, so that everyone can take advantage uh, you know, of this kind of technology. In other words, you know, again, not everyone is a data scientist, right? So, um, you're bringing a lot of the same techniques, uh, you know, to data mining, but do it in such a way that it's uh, it's, it's easy for everyone. Um, so I don't know if that answered your question or not, but. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of an open question because it really is about the future, right? Yep. I mean, as Dave always says, one penguin jumps in the water, they all jump in, and certainly with analytics, you're seeing the business benefits, it's kind of a no-brainer. You don't really got to do a quick ROI to say, hey, you get some good analysts, you get some data scientists, you can do some new things. Yeah, and I think it's, I think it's a general trend. I think it's just sort of natural, if you see the progression of, of how um, you know, statistics has changed, even you know, baseball. Right, you know, yeah. if you've seen Moneyball, Money yeah, you know, absolutely. It's, it's sort of a, it's, it got to a point where um, people needed to figure out better ways to optimize, uh, you know, how do I build a better team even though I don't necessarily have the money to do it, right? Is there different ways I can focus and, and optimize so Rich, players? So let me step back here and let's talk about the conference here in Splunk. I mean, yep. so two questions. One, talk to the folks out there and kind of describe the scene here. It's early, still early days. The company went public, they're growing, they're on a big rocket ship ramp. A lot of success, a lot of passionate uh, partners and 
and customers. Um, so talk about the, the environment here, what's it like, and two, why are people so excited about Splunk? You know what, it, it's, it's, it's great, I think, to, uh, it, to, to see the, the, the kinds of people that do show up here. Uh, there's a sort of an interesting mix of you know, really hardcore geeks. Um, I think that comes from sort of Splunk's roots. Um, you know, to you know, people that are more uh, sort of business professionals. Um, one of the things I love about this, this conference is, is that it's very, very education focused. Like people come here to actually learn stuff. Yeah, whiteboards in the hallways. Exactly, yeah. Are, so it's it's not stuff. just I'm here for a boondoggle, you know, in that's, Las Vegas. Yeah, you know, there's yeah. a bit of that, but <laughs> um, that the fact that it's very much education focused, when people come to, uh, you know, our booth or any of the vendor's booths, they want to learn something, right? I think that's sort of an intrinsic uh, sort of aspect of this conference. You know, Dave and I always talk about this market that we're in, it's an inflection point of, you know, epic proportions, wealth creation, innovation, business value, human value, people value. And we kind of talk about the revolution of the PC revolution. And I got to say, these events like this remind me of the early days of the PC industry where you know, people, you look around, you young people building an industry, a whole new industry, not like just disrupting an old one, taking over another, but basically recasting a new business. Yep. Um, so it's super exciting, congratulations. Um, I'll let you get the final word in. To Two the Northeastern boys, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. Rich is uh, attended Northeastern, John. Yeah, yeah Northeastern, North yeah, and right. you. Go Huskies. Cool. Yeah. Um, Everybody wants to go Northeastern now, because <laughs> of the co-op program. Nobody can get I went in. to RPI, too, by the way. Yeah, so, RPI, yeah. yeah, so I did spend some time <laughs> okay. in the capital area. Uh, Troy. Right, <laughs> yeah. Northeastern yeah. alumni is here. One of them's the host, that's me, guest of Northeastern alumni. Uh, we are inside the Cube. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, Rich Collier here. With the, in, inside the Cube, we'll be right back with our next guest here at the Splunk Conference, where they are spinning Data exhaust into gold, no limits. Listen to your data, that's their theme. Um, this, is, this is the future, this is a great opportunity, great market. We'll be right back with more exclusive coverage here live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back. <laughs>